Absolutely. So Kelly, this is so exciting. You have your new position and we just have a couple of questions to ask you. And, um, you know, before you started working with us, where were you before you decided to kind of join up with Tim and I? Well, I had, I lost my position as a director of nursing in November of 2019. So um, just kind of like, you know, let sort of lick my wounds a little bit over the holidays. And then, um, you know, it was just time to kind of get back to business after the first of the year. And so George and I just did a lot of talking and, you know, um, just knew the job market was just going to be really challenging. We knew that we kind of wanted to leave the Tampa area and, you know, explore options primarily in Dallas, but I think we were open to a lot of other things. So I, I, I credit George to finding you guys and, um, you know, kind of bringing me on board, you know, he's employed, I'm not employed. So, you know, it was just time for us to kind of get to business and find good strategies to, you know, to find a good job. And for me, I think my, I think my primary, um, goal was to get out of the industry that I was in, which was clinical, clinical nurse leadership and get more into a corporate setting. So I just really felt like I was going to need some help to be able to make that jump. Sure. So you guys, sometimes, you know, like I said, I credit George with all the background. So. <laughs> and sometimes it can be, you know, I know, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but you worked at the same organization for 20 years and you were promoted lots of times. So probably when it was that point, you know, because this is our second question, at what point did you say, hey, I probably need help with this? And probably because you were like, well, I've never done this before. The last time you probably had to get a job was, you know, a long time ago. But after yeah. what was going through your mind when you left that job, like, where do I start? Or, you know, at what point did you say, hey, I need some help with this? I'm not even sure really what I'm doing. Well, I guess for me in the beginning, I was pretty devastated over the whole thing. 25 mm -hmm. years with the same organization, you know, with, with a track record of just upward mobility for those 25 years. You know, I think that, you know, I just spent a little time kind of like writing my ship a little bit because I was pretty devastated about the whole thing. And once I did... I just didn't know what to do. You know, to your point, I, I had always found my opportunities within an organization that I still believe is a very good organization, you know, but unfortunately, you know, I, um, I had to figure out how else to do it and I didn't know how else to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really, I just didn't. And I didn't know how to figure out how do I go into a more corporate setting when my entire career, I've been a clinical nurse. You know, so mm -hmm. I just think, you know, once I got to January and you just get overwhelmed with like, my gosh, where do I go from here? Mm -hmm. And the more George and I talked about it and he's used, you know, some recruiters in the past, but, you know, he really felt that there was a lot of benefit in finding a career coach, someone to help us really guide us along the way. So um, I was on board. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I know the other thing too when we got your everything updated and when we figured out who we we're going to get a hold of, I remember you were like really scared to like, man, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get a hold of these people. And then once we started, I remember you were like, Hey, people do want to talk to me, right? This is, yeah. you, you know, yeah. so t tell people maybe a little bit about the current position and you're moving from Tampa to, it's going to be located in, in Texas. No, this is, is a no. remote this position. Is, oh, this, a remote position. Yeah. yeah, this position for me actually has turned into a remote position. Um, if I want to move up in the company, then I will have to find myself in a location where they have an office. But, but right now I'm about to find myself not only in a completely new industry, but also managing people remotely, which is gonna be a complete you know, 360 for me learning how to do that. So, you know, this is going to be different on all fronts for me. So, you know, 
I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but the good news is that you were able to make that transition from, mm -hmm. you know, clinical nursing into that corporate setting, which is exactly what you wanted. So this is, you know, the dream role that you were looking for and you were able to make that pivot, which is exciting. So one thing that we'd like to ask is, you know, working through this program, what did you find the most valuable out of all of this? Some people say the mindset portion, some people say the interview prep for you. What was the most valuable part? I think in the beginning, I think that it was, you know, getting on the calls with the group and really getting my mindset first, you know, in the right place, because I was really in a devastated headspace, I think, when I found you guys. Mm -hmm. And I think that understanding that, you know, what happened was not a failure on my part and that, you know, this happens to people all the time. I've just been fortunate enough to grow within a company. And, you know, once you get to a certain point, you become much more expendable when you get into, you know, much higher executive levels. And um, so I think first, what was very helpful to me was to get on the calls and listen to the group and understand, you know, Tim's pep talks and things like that, that, you know, get in the right headspace. Then I think the one thing that I felt was such a chore and so hard, but is actually the thing that made the biggest difference for me was the, you know, getting the list of the, the, you know, the top, what was it? The, the top 500, Fortune mm -hmm. 500 companies, you know, and just really starting to leaf through those and decide which of those companies were what I was looking for. And then finding ways to connect with people within those organizations, because I stand by, and I've watched many people in this, you know, era of COVID lose their jobs. And the time after time, it's, it's really, it's not what, you know, it's who, you know, you yeah. know, and it's making those, those cold calls like I did and making those connections with people. And, um, I really got this job just because mm -hmm. those strategies that you guys taught us about, you know, um, connecting with people through LinkedIn and just having conversations. And like Tim said, yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to talk to these people on the phone. I mean, anytime I ever wanted to ascend my career, I went to the people that I knew. And, and here I was going to ask people that I didn't know, you know, mm -hmm. for some help. But yes, people, if you reach out to them, you know, Kara helped me with some scripting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you ask people for help, like, hey, we have similar career paths looking to do the same thing, you know, do, if you have some time, I'd love to talk to you about how you did. And it worked for me time and time again. Absolutely. So. And I do know previous, you know, when Jeff Brady, before he got hired in Dallas, you like hooked up with his wife too, to get some insights. So, you know, getting a hold of people you don't know, mm -hmm. leveraging networks, very, very important. So well, and the other, the other thing too, that I would say was really great for me was connecting with John Sims. Because mm -hmm. he, he yeah. you know, I think a lot, a lot of times we nurses are a little bit the um, minority, you know, when, when you are looking for positions like this. And so for me, it was really great to have a conversation with John Sims, who was, you know, an executive level nurse who found his next position, you know, found himself um, in much the same situation I was in. And so being able to relate to somebody who was in my field, and he gave me some great contacts who were very helpful, you know, as I explored job opportunities and things like that. So I think, you know, I really do believe that bringing those of us who have, we'll say, graduated from the program, you know, in to help those that are in there, I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And I really, I really do believe that that can, I don't know, it just kind of helped me to understand that, you know, there are other opportunities out there besides what I was doing. And just talk to somebody who's in a like industry, mm -hmm. who's, you know, found their way, you know, I would be very happy to be that for somebody else. Oh. Awesome. What advice would you have for someone who's maybe considering working with this? Maybe they're just like you, right? Maybe they've got 25 years at the same company and they're not sure what, where to start, or maybe they have different, you know, concerns. What advice would you have for them if they go back and watch this video? You know, that it's not the end of the world, you know, that it's, it's, it can be a soul crusher and a, an ego buster and stuff like that, but it's not the end of the world. And 
It happens to people all the time. And as you go through the interview process, yep, you're going to be asked about it. But at the end of the day, I have felt like as I've gone through, you know, and I, and I've, and this isn't the only position that I've gone to, you know, really um, extensive levels of interviewing, you know, once you kind of get back past that question, it's over. You know what I mean? You, you have to face it. It's over. And they feel that you're a fit for their company based on your merit and not necessarily based on the fact that you lost your job, you mm -hmm. know? And, and I think that, uh, that, that was a real, um, concern for me, even though, you know, I, I understood, you know, all the things that happened and why I lost my job, but I was afraid who's going to want me like I lost mm -hmm. my job, you know, but really people want you because you, what you come to the table with and the merit that you bring with you. So, mm -hmm. so the other thing you're talking about is really that interview prep because that gets a lot of people because they don't know what to say, you know, and if you don't know what to say on the phone, in person, on these interviews, they're absolutely not going to, you know, move you forward in, in these next rounds. Uh -huh. So, awesome. Yeah, prepping and definitely, you know, spending time and asking for the help. And, you know, you need, you need a little help with scripting, you know, you need a little help with, you know, just getting ready for an interview, or you just plain have questions that you want to address before you get in that situation. I would encourage people to, to, to pick your brains, you know, to, to call you, make the appointments with you. Like, even if all they need is just five minutes of something that's a little bit of an ego boost or just, you know, a little bit of a question, you know, don't shy away from asking for help when you need it. Awesome. That's Absolutely. what you guys are there for. Thanks, Kelly.